All right, YouTube. So it's been um, it's been a cool minute. It's been a while since you guys have heard from me, or I've uploaded, or edited, or made a video. And as you can see, <laughs> there's a reason to it. I wanted to go ahead and make this video to just kind of explain everything that happened, the process of it, what's going on. Mainly because a lot of you guys are interested in what has happened. I feel like I've been able to go ahead and um, take the past month and a half and just really be able to soak everything in and learn from it. And I think right now would be the appropriate time to go ahead and make a video. And on top of that, I mean, th this is the last week that I'll be having the Miata in my possession. So starting tomorrow, uh, people will be coming over uh, to go ahead and start pulling parts off and basically going to be parting it out until nobody wants anything and then she'll be off to to car heaven. So as I mentioned before, um, the car is, is it's done. I know a lot of you guys have followed uh, my build through Instagram. There are many times where I posted stuff on Snapchat. Um, definitely posted a lot of videos, a lot of fun videos. I mean, just made a documentary of myself with the car, uh, thanks to my boy Saber. But you know, obviously, things in life happen, and so you know, I'm not really here to complain about the situation, but rather to just kind of explain to you guys what happened and to just kind of give you guys my learning process behind behind it because I definitely feel like there were a lot of lessons that I learned you know based off of a accident that happened in less than five seconds so that all happened I mean this all happened literally a month and a half ago so um, some people could see it as a pretty long time for me to go ahead and release a video about it but like I said it just I really needed time to just go ahead and reflect and to just kind of think about you know what it is that I wanted to share with you guys because it's pretty serious it's it's definitely a serious topic you know because accidents happen to car enthusiasts all the time and most of the time we think of it as like you know what it's it, it's never gonna happen to me or it's not gonna happen to me because you know I'm a good driver and I know my car or I built it a certain way but you know certain things are just inevitable and you know I, I can definitely say that that's one thing that honestly I, I truly believed in my heart was I believed you know what like an accident couldn't happen to me because I have full control of my car it's a Miata it's lightweight 50 50 weight distribution like it's just the perfect car but like I said I mean sometimes things in life just happen and you just kind of learn your lessons the hard way my accident happened back on June 18th I was hanging out with a friend of mine all day we were working on her car her new project car you know after that we were just like hey you know what like let's let's go get something to eat let's go and i don't know let's go for a drive it's your, your typical car enthusiast thing right i mean you you go and you get some food you get behind the wheel and you just have it's just like the best time of your life and so the the place that we had ended up wanting to go to was um one of the viewpoints over on on highway nine um, so we drove all the way over to Skyline, Skyline Viewpoint, for those of you guys who know it, we're local to the Bay Area, I'm sure you guys have heard of it. But we drove up there and everything was fine. I mean, it was, it was a great day, the car felt great. I mean, it was just a nice and easy day, it was just a normal day. Working on a car, going out for a drive, I couldn't have asked for, for a better day. Basically what had happened was, I was coming around a bend, um, for those of you guys who know Skyline Boulevard, it's the one just before the Cal Fire Station. And as I was coming around that bend and then starting to go down the hill, there was a motorcyclist uh, who had just crossed over into the Cal Fire little parking lot. And another motorcyclist behind him who was crossing into my lane. That moment, I mean, all I really felt was fear. For those of you guys who've seen the video, I mean, you guys, you guys basically have seen it firsthand because I did have a dash cam in the car when it happened and a lot of people criticized me for it. A lot of people said, well, if you would have gone a little more to the right, you could have cut left or if you would have cut left, you could have cut right. I mean, everybody always has an opinion based on what I could have done, even though they weren't there in the situation. A lot of people will go ahead and judge me for the situation. A lot of people will go ahead and say, oh, well, you could have done this, you could have done that or I would have done this, I would have done that. But at the end of the day, I mean, you have to make a decision in less than a second because that's how long it took for me to see her. The whole accident itself, 
took about five seconds. In the split second that I could make a decision, I made the decision to basically aim my car to where there was nobody and hit the brakes and hope that I could stop. The brakes locked up and I went into a wall right in front of the Cal Fire Station, so basically the mural that they have. Once I felt my brakes lock up, I remember myself screaming. It's a situation that I never really saw myself in and it's terrifying. I mean, there's no other way for me to put it. It's a terrifying and a traumatic experience. And I just remember the impact. I remember my ears ringing. I remember the pain. Luckily, I was delivered to the Cal Fire Station, so the firefighters who were um, at the station were able to respond really quickly and were able to get me out and, and put me on a stretcher. But, I mean, ultimately, it was a, it was a pretty traumatic, pretty exhausting experience. From there, once they pulled me out of the car, uh, they told me that I needed to obviously get to a hospital, um, to a trauma hospital or a trauma center, and well, the ambulance was gonna take way too long. And so because the firefighters didn't know the extent of the damage, um, they contacted you know, whoever they needed to contact, and um, I was escorted to Stanford Hospital via helicopter. They did tons of things, they did tons of tests, CT scans, and I was blessed. I was blessed because ultimately I left the hospital five hours later with a lot of bruising on my chest and my abdomen due to the four point harness that I had in the car. I had a fractured foot and a fractured sternum which I'm still dealing with at the moment and I also had a really really bad cut tongue so my tongue looked like it had waves like on the sides because I guess like from the tension or from the accident, I mean, I can't really pinpoint where it happened, but I, I cut the crap out of my tongue. Definitely feel it the next day and the day after that, you definitely feel it the most those days after an accident. I'm sure those of you guys who have been in accidents can obviously vouch that the next few days are, are pretty painful, but uh, you know, I just kind of dealt with it the best that I could. I mean, I still have a fractured sternum. Luckily it's healing, doesn't hurt as bad anymore. So, you know, I've been able to move around a little bit more. I'm still dealing with quite a bit of whiplash, so I mean, in the mornings my neck and my back can be pretty painful. Once I get moving, it gets a little better, so um, I'll definitely be needing some therapy for that. For those of you guys who have seen like my live videos or anything else or follow me on Instagram, you guys know that I got this, uh, this awesome blue flaked cast. So I've been rocking around on that and this, uh, this is basically my new whip. So this cool little knee scooter with all like three horsepower of its glorious self. Ultimately, I mean, that's just kind of the situation. That's just kind of how it happened. Um, if you guys have seen the, the dash cam footage, then you know you guys know firsthand what it was like for me, what the experience was. In terms of insurance, as of right now, there's not really much that I can do and not much that my insurance can do because a motorcyclist who was in my lane uh, my insurance was going to try to go after her because she made a left turn in a solid, double solid line and obviously that's illegal but when she talked to the police she just said that she witnessed my accident, that she wasn't an involved party. Kind of a bummer but at the end of the day I know that uh, you know whatever needs to happen is going to happen. Ultimately I'm trusting in the Lord. He didn't forsake me during the accident because I know that, I know that the accident could have been way worse if I'm being honest with you guys. Like, I'm just gonna be completely and brutally honest with you guys. Like, I know that the accident could have been way worse. I could have come out with a broken foot, but instead of it being broken, it was fractured. I could have come out with a shattered sternum, but instead of that, it was just a surface fracture. I mean, there are tons of things that could have happened. I, I easily could have died in that accident. You know, for, for the next few days, I questioned as of to, to why. There, there's been a lot of questions as of to why and what purpose God has for my life in terms of like why everything is happening the way that it has to be but it you know if God didn't forsake me during the accident I know that he's not going to forsake me throughout the process that's one of the questions that a lot of you guys have been asking you know like how has the process been and I can honestly say that as hard as the process has been it, it's been a blessing it's been a blessing because I've learned a lot I've learned a lot about myself I've been able to take this time to reflect I mean I can look at my car and you know I can make jokes about it I'm not hurt honestly I'm not hurt, I'm not angry, I'm not even sad that the accident happened. If anything, I'm glad. I know that, like I said, I could have easily died, but God gave the accident a purpose. And I know that for many people out there, you know, you, might, you guys might not understand that. 
And you guys might think that, you know what, like, well, God was the one who put you in that accident. But realistically, no. I believe in a God who's forgiving. I believe in a God who's sovereign and who always has a purpose for our lives. I'm not upset. I'm not sad. I'm not mad. If anything, honestly, I'm just taking it as a learning lesson. It sucks. It does. It definitely sucks that my car is gone. You know, especially after all the hard work that I put into it. I mean, you guys have seen, you know, the videos or, or if you guys follow me on Instagram, you guys have seen the tons of work that I did to this car. But I think ultimately one of the biggest lessons that I've learned is that as car enthusiasts, as much as as much time and money that we put into them, they're just they're just a car. It's always important to remember that as much time and as much money as we invest in these machines, it can be taken away in a split second. And that's probably been one of the hardest things for me to accept because I was definitely I was definitely sad. I put a lot of work into it and I had a lot of good times, I had a lot of good memories, I made a lot of people smile, I just had a lot of fun with the car. If, if that's anything that I could say is like, I'm just glad that it, it's the car and it's not me. Because as, as hard as it may be, as hard as it's been me to move around, as much of a burden as I've felt because I had to go around on a scooter and you know I can't really go out and enjoy the time and, and hikes and doing all that stuff with my friends I mean I'm just glad I'm alive if I'm being honest with you guys there's just tons of things that could have happened and I'm just glad that they didn't dude and I know that sounds extremely weird but I'm so glad that this accident happened because it taught me a lot about myself it taught me what to appreciate it taught me who my real friends were which is one of the biggest takeaways that I've had from this I mean I thought a lot more people had my back but you know something like this happens and you know, whatever. I learned the importance of family. I learned the importance of friendship. I've learned the importance of just, just being smart. Just making smart decisions. With that being said, I know that some of you guys might be eager to go ahead and get a closer look at the car. So, let's go ahead and do that next. So ultimately, this is the, um, this is the state that she's in. Um, crazy enough, the headlights are fine. <laughs> a lot of people said that the car still looks happy, so. I guess that's kind of good, you know, she died happy, but you guys can see the inside the engine bay it looks okay but everything's actually pushed back that's where the coil over is just under this filter so I mean everything is just pretty much done the fender is done on this side the fender on the other side is also done you guys can see the uh, the windshield also cracked and this side is basically sitting on a rim and that uh, is just completely, completely crunched up. I think the uh, the most tragic experience was the hard top, um, because once you come inside, you can see over here on the other side that it's cracked. So that's definitely one of the most sucky parts. Is that uh, well, the hard top is pretty much going to need a lot of repair if anybody wanted to take it. And I did have somebody express some interest, so they might come and pick it up. You can see here that the shift knob is, well, hiding because the transmission got pushed backward. And then the inside is just pretty much all done. On the rear ends, not much. Not much bad. It's pretty much fine. Um, but then see, you can see the hard top right there. Um, and then the exhaust is basically dragging on the floor. So, So like I mentioned, I mean, it's done, it's totaled. There's still parts that uh, people could salvage off of the car if they really wanted to. And I mean, they're going to. They're going to come sometime this week. I do have somebody actually coming later today to pick up the taillights because they want to go ahead and do some stuff with the taillights. So, but I mean, yeah. I mean, ultimately, like I said, it was a really big turning point for me. Really crazy experience. I would never wish it upon any of you guys. I mean, ultimately, that's... Pretty much the gist of it. So there will be no Miata, at least not anytime soon. I guess if, if there's anything I can leave you guys with, I mean, at the end of this video, it's it's a few things. First things first, appreciate what you have. It sounds very cliche, <laughs> sounds very corny, but definitely appreciate what you have while you have it because everything could be gone, said and done in a matter of seconds. But I think the ultimate thing that I wanna I want to leave you guys with is this trust in God I know that it might sound weird to some of you guys and I know that you know for those of you guys who don't believe in God you know you may find it offensive but this is what I believe in and I'm not telling you guys that you guys have to be a certain way but this is a lesson that I've learned and if it can 
influence some of you guys, if it can motivate some of you guys, then I've done my job. But if there's one last thing that I can leave you guys with in this video, it's with a Bible verse. So it's actually uh, Jeremiah 29 11. And it says, For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you hope and a future. So the reason I bring up that verse is because it it basically connects to everything that I've learned from this whole experience. Regardless of every anything that came my way, regardless of the bills that came in, regardless of how scary things got or how painful things got, I trusted in the Lord and I trusted in God and I trusted in that promise that he says in Jeremiah 29 11. I trusted that he had plans for me and that everything that happens in my life is going to be to go ahead and make me prosper, to give me hope in the future. It was definitely hard, it gets hard. But at the end of the day, crazy enough, as I was analyzing that Bible verse, I realized, hey, you know what? The Bible verse says, for I know the plans, declares the Lord. It doesn't say that he knows and we know. I don't need to know what he has for me and what's in store in the future, but if I trust in him, I know that everything's gonna be all right. I'll just leave you guys with that. There is one last thing that I do actually wanna go ahead and announce. Throughout all this time that I've been uh, obviously in quarantine and not being able to really do much because of the accident, I did go ahead and make some bigger decisions for my life and to just kind of expand as, uh, as Valley Meets as the brand name. I will be launching a, my website. I will finally have a website and I also did finally trademark the Valley Meets name, so I'm really, really excited about that. As soon as this video drops, the website will be live. And once the website is live, you guys are able to go ahead and purchase one Valley Meets decals that I have on the car. Or you guys can also go ahead and pre-order the first ever embroidered sweaters of Valley Meets. So let me go ahead and get that real quick. So these are the new Valley Meets hoodies. So it says Valley Meets in nice stitching and established in 17. So these are extremely comfortable. They're nine ounce hoodies and um, these guys will be going for $60 a piece on pre-order. If you guys are interested in going ahead and supporting me and kind of helping me get back on my feet ever since the accident, I've had a few people go ahead and offer me you know, donations and ask me what my cash app and my Venmo is, but I mean, me personally, like I just, I don't like handouts. So um, if you truly, truly want to go ahead and support me, please go ahead and check out the website. Go ahead and cop yourself some embroidered hoodies with Valley Meats. If you guys are interested in pre-ordering these sweaters, please go ahead and check out the website. I will go ahead and drop the link down in the description so you guys can go ahead and just click on that and go ahead and get access to these guys. But yeah, thank you guys so much for taking the time to go ahead and watch this video. I hope and I really pray that um, I was able to go ahead and reach out to some of you guys and if if it was any influence or you know there was anything that I said that you liked or disliked go ahead and drop a like or a dislike go ahead and drop something in the comments and um, I don't want to give away too much but I have some plans for the future so don't unsubscribe if anything if you're new to the channel go ahead and subscribe because I got some pretty cool things coming as soon as I'm able to go ahead and walk and start kicking life's ass again so Go ahead and leave you guys with that. Like I said, please go ahead and drop a like or a dislike, comment, subscribe, and go cop yourself some hoodies, man. I'm telling you, these are comfortable. Cold season is coming up. For those of us in California, we know you're cold in the morning, you're hot in the midday, and then you're cold again. So, And with that being said, remember to stay up, stay tuned. Peace out, guys. Until next time.